that in. Oh wait, the whole thing or just the big part? Whatever part you want. Okay, check it. For all of you who were watching yesterday, you saw the street cleaning. County came in and cleaned the streets finally because the CCA, CCEA were not doing their job. Basically, they, what they were trying to do is leverage their services or their lack of services and attempting to blame it on the residents of Skid Row. Attempting to call them service resistant. When, of course, they were service resistant because the CCEA wanted to come in and spray the streets with cold water to spread disease. I mean, I don't know if that was their plan or if they were just too lazy or cheap to actually use soap or bleach. But that's why they were resistant to the CCEA cleaning. Now, when the county came in and they came with bleach and actual disinfectant, the people moved their belongings happily from 4th in town, right here, across the street to 3rd in town, to await the cleaning because the people do not want health hazards in their community. I mean, it's not like they can control it. They don't have homes. This is where they have to live, on the street. Uh, this seems to be a hard concept for people in the CCA, CCEA, the mayor's office, the city council to grasp. But people don't want to be on Skid Row, at least not on the streets of Skid Row. So, what happened is people moved their belongings down across the street, third in town. The streets were clean. They look beautiful, don't they? They look crispy, nice, you know. Um, when the people attempted to move their belongings back to their normal spot, they were surrounded by police. Now, a couple of years ago, I mean, as, as I, if you've been following, uh, 2005, the city passed the Safer Cities Initiative, which basically criminalized homelessness here. Not only in the fact that you can't sit or lay on the sidewalk at all. That was the original thing. I mean, uh, they had to go to court and get what's called the Jones Settlement to be able to sleep from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. on the sidewalk. So, I mean, originally, the city said, well, we just don't want you here. They criminalized homelessness. You couldn't sleep at any time of day. They were busting people at midnight for sleeping on the sidewalk. And that's why the Jones Settlement came about. So, what, also had, what the police were also doing, and the best way to move people out, really, if you don't have anything, the best way to keep you the hell away from what they're, where they're trying to keep you is to seize what little property you have. Now, and Los Angeles Community Action Network, several other organizations, and some great lawyers, uh, mainly Carol Sobel, went to court and got an injunction against the police from seizing homeless people's property. Now, they may take abandoned property, but they may not take claimed property. And this does not just apply to people who stay on the streets. This also, I mean, they, they love to say you can go to the mission and all this, which is bullshit, because you can't take your possessions into the mission. You still have to leave them on the streets when you're trying to access services and the police were still taking possessions then. So this is how you got the injunction, which is a federal injunction by, I believe, the 9th District Court. Um, it's early in the morning, my brain's not cracking, right? So, a federal injunction against seizing homeless people's property. Now, this was about two years ago. Since then, the LAPD has been trying to find a way to end run around it. They tried to use the red shirts, uh, what we would call the red skirts, who are the CCEA private security guards to go around this and try to have them seize property, but the people realize that they don't have any power other than an ugly shirt and a bicycle. <laughs> so the people will, will not, we're not gonna let that happen, all right? So what the city did is wait for a health, uh, for a, uh, they, they uh, I mean, actually the county did a health report recently. They recently released a uh, public health report on Skid Row claiming that there were unsanitary conditions, not, not claiming, because there are. There's unsanitary conditions on Skid Row. This is a place that is not built, fit for human cohabitation, mainly because the cities, that's sort of the way it's been planned, you know? I mean, you got three to 5,000 people sleeping on these streets every night. Uh, let's be honest, you have 50 brand new cops in Skid Row under the Safer Cities Initiative. They want to bring in 50 more cops into Skid Row. Skid Row is a 50 square block area. You have 50 police in Skid Row, actually 100 extra police, don't, don't forget, those are extra police. They were assigned to Central Division. You can put a cop on every corner, there should not be any crime, or any drugs, or any violence in Skid Row. The fact that this has been allowed to perpetrate, I mean, among other, other reports, as in the Lorraine Hotel being 
the clearinghouse for central, the drug clearinghouse for central division, among other things, states that the police not only are not doing their job to curb violence and to curb drug use, they are participating in drug sales. I say this again, as Minister of Information for Occupy the Hood, this is an official statement. The police are selling drugs on Skid Row. Where else are they coming from? We will offer evidence shortly. But that's beyond the point. What happened was, and I'm, I told you, my brain's clicking in different directions early in the morning. It's cool, it's cool. The people came back, were surrounded by police. The police violated a federal injunction, the federal injunction against seizing property. Now, all of the property yesterday was up on top of shopping carts, shopping carts provided by Catholic Charities, which was another court battle to stop the police from seizing them, which is why Catholic Charities provided these shopping carts, so people could move their belongings. So, the police attempted to not only seize the shopping carts, we had to take them in a picket line around and around and around to get these pigs to back off. And they blatantly, and on tape, and watch for the shadow media block for it's coming soon, um, that they, they violated the federal injunction, they seized property, uh, they arrested Wero for chalking, which is a whole different thing, yet again protected, I know that one's protected by the Ninth District Court. That's a protected constitutional right to chalk. It's not defacing a property because it washes right off. So they took Wero to jail again. They love Wero. <laughs> yeah. He's a favorite. He is a favorite. They, they don't messed up his arm. They broke his arm. All right. It didn't set right. They twisted it. They sprained it again. They damn near broke it again this time. This is what they love to do. They love to fuck with Wero. Um, so, uh... Yeah, damn, where were we at? I'm sorry, Patty. My, I'm, I'm just drinking this coffee. Uh, um, yeah. See, that's why I wish I had just done video. Now. We did the, we did the, well, we can edit the video. We did oh, the. picket line, picket line. The picket line, yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, and uh, the, pe the people stood up, and, and let's be honest. If they did it to us, I mean, we just saw it two seconds ago. The police pulled up. Some guy was standing right there, down on third in town. They pulled up, rim, rim, move your ass. He moved. Yeah. Because let's face it, if you're homeless, which I, I don't know how many people watching have been, you don't want to fuck with the police. It's bad enough you're homeless, you don't want to be in jail. So they've, been, they've managed to clear every other street that they've done with the county with this. This is Occupy Skid Row, though. We face off against the police every day and don't give a shit because we are trying to build a culture of resistance in Skid Row. And this is not just for the homeless. Skid Row is not just homeless. All right, there are 13,000 residents in Skid Row, not including the three to 5,000 homeless people that sleep on these streets every night. And the reason that these three to five homeless, three to 5,000 homeless people sleep on these streets every night are because of failed city policies. You know, uh, shit, where were we at, man? <laughs> you know. I don't know, but, but yesterday we were, we were standing off with the police. Uh, they were walking forward, and I was walking backward, filming them. And the lady cop was pushing, touching people with her hands. Her hands were coming near me. I told her, do not touch me. Is she allowed to touch me? Am I allowed to tell her not to touch me? You're allowed to tell her not to touch you, and officially she is not allowed to touch you. But see, that's, that's the point. That's what they're using to clear people off. This is basically like uh, a land grab. So... It doesn't matter if people have the legal right to be here in the police's eyes. And it doesn't matter if anything that they do, if they arrest people, if it violates a federal injunction. They don't give a shit if the cases stick. What they want to do is move people off so they can reclaim the land. These cases are not going to stick. Of course I mean, the cases aren't going to stick because they're bullshit. Yeah. But the police don't care about that. If I was a judge and you brought chalking into my courtroom. It's never stuck. It's oh, never, I'd be I mean, pissed it's, it's, off. There's already been a decision. There's already been a decision that that is a protected right. That's why none of these chalking arrests, the CCA or here, have ever stuck. This is a false arrest. What to, that's what this is. This is a method that the police are trying to use to move people off of this spot. Also, it's direct um, intimidation of police terrorism. When they give them the uh, jaywalking tickets, that was in Chapman as well. Hey, you know what? Absolutely. Well, that, that's what this shit is designed to do. That's what 4118D is designed to do. Because over there uh, where the, the police tape was, they escorted them off of the street in the middle of the street. And then gave them jaywalking tickets. And then gave them jaywalking tickets. Yet again, Wero got three jaywalking tickets in less than 30 minutes. They were all jaywalking tickets? They were all jaywalking tickets. Because every time 
they, they, he was getting his property and right down there at the end of the street, there was the police tape. And every time they escorted him out in the middle of the street, they didn't escort him out at the sidewalk. Nope. And that gave him a jaywalking ticket for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's some crazy shit, isn't it? <laughs> and they, they weren't shit. checking for the green walking mans either. They were just escorting him out. And just setting him out into the street and then ticketing him. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's what they do. I mean, and that's what this whole thing is. It, it is a consistent, what we are seeing right now on Skid Row is being repeated. Skid Row is a laboratory, not just for the U.S., U.S. policing practices, but for overseas policing practices. The policies developed right here are being practiced in Baghdad, are being practiced in Kabul, being practiced all over the world. And... What the tactic that they're able to use here, I mean, you know, they can't just shoot motherfuckers like they're doing bad dad in Kabul here. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, not yet. Uh, what they're doing, like 4118D in itself, is designed to move people from the streets into concentration camps, which you would call prisons. But, which you should call concentration camps. That's what they're designed to do. 4118D violations are not citable offenses. 4118D violations are misdemeanors. And as your misdemeanors add up, your criminal record adds up. And eventually, you're a repeat offender and you go to jail. That's what happened to a whole lot of people on Skid Row. A whole lot of people are sitting in jail right now in concentration camps for nothing else but being homeless or being addicted. That's what's happening right now. And whether you care or not, which a lot of you don't, but you should, because you're next. You're next. It's like happening. that that one thing, like nobody spoke for the. Yeah, they, yeah, they, wait, wait, they took yeah. the the it philosophers. Was priest, and, it? it was a priest during no uh, the Nazi regime. No one spoke up for the philosophers, and then they came for the, like they but, came well, for these it's, people, it's, uh, and nobody spoke up for them. And, and well, wait, what did it? Hold on. Because I wasn't one of them. It. I'm gonna try to quote it. Uh, I might be off, but when they came for the Jews, I did not speak because I wasn't Jewish. When they came for the blacks, I did not speak because I wasn't black. By the time they came for me, there was no one left to speak. That's odd. You know, that might be a little off, but that's pretty much what it it's is. It's kind of like that, yeah. 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 I mean, Angela Davis said it as well. If they come for us in the evening, they're coming for your ass in the morning. For real. Yeah. So that that's what's happening right now. And I know that some of you watching don't believe that, but <laughs> I like you to look at your own situation. How bad has your situation gotten recently? It's they getting... talk about economic recession. We are in a depression right now. We're not, but that's what I'm saying. That, and that's what we've always said at Occupy the Hood, Occupy Skid Row, and Occupy Shadow Media. There is no economic crisis. There's plenty of money. Look around, there's money all over the place. All over the place. You know, and our city government, like I said, is working with the Central Cities Association, working with the Central Cities East Association to so, um, create So, I have a question. Um, Absolutely. I know that the, the Central Cities Association is a lobbying group, but who's it, who who are the the people who pay the CCA? Oh, name it. All right, Verizon, AT and T, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, U.S. Bank. These are the lobbying firms that help finagle the laws, not just in California, but nationally so you have wait, wait wait what was the last count 18 million seized homes in the last what four years so basically the the, the situation that's happening right here is occupy wall street on the local level absolutely and that that's what it needs to be that's what it needs to be that, i mean occupy wall street is beautiful we don't live i mean we live but this on is wall, wall street. street this is wall, wall street, street is, wall street in los angeles is right down here it's in the hardest skid row it's called the nickel Fifth and Wall is a nickel. Wall Street has been occupied for the last 30 years. Says, uh, says Ronald Reagan forced people out of their homes and out of service institutions. Oh, thank you, Ronald Reagan. Thank you. You know, yeah, thank you, Ronald Reagan, you prick. You know, I hope you burn in hell. If I could revive you, I'd bring you alive. Because it's back so to compassionate you. to let people out of the hospital. Yes. The mental hospitals who came out wipe their own ass. Exactly. That's compassionate. That is what Patty was telling. If y'all missed it yesterday, her mother was working at the hospital. At the time. The mental and, hospital. Yeah, huh? Yeah, the mental institution. And, and wait, what, what was what was her job before people had to leave, right, right as people were being so sent she, out? She was working as a teacher for the college at Camel State Hospital. And uh, Ronald Reagan decided that it would be compassionate to, to not hold people against their will. That we're not going to hold people in a mental hospital against their will. Let's be compassionate. So my mom, who was a, a teacher with the college, 
at Camarillo State Hospital. Right before they, they let them out, her job towards the end, right before they close it down, was to teach people how to brush their teeth and wipe their ass. And then release them onto the streets with no housing, with no way of so, supporting um, themselves. Um, that's one reason that I kind of developed this love for homeless people, because whenever we went to Ventura, downtown Ventura, all the homeless people in downtown Ventura, my mother knew them by their name. Why she used to treat them, probably. And, and she would say hello to them by their name. and I mean, and, and that's something that people need to realize. And, and, and our government is really, and, and not just our government, our media, our corporations, our money interests are very good at making people the other. And that's what they've done with Skid Row. Everybody's a drug addict. Everybody's batshit crazy. Everybody's service resistant. Look, yeah, okay, people are a little bit batshit crazy, but uh, so are your neighbors. All right? You live in a society that's designed to repress you. You fight back, and yet again, I say this is not a victim thing. Everybody says, oh, well, there's no victims. You got to get up off your ass and fight. You're a victim. The system is designed to victimize you. And once you realize that, your anger should lead you to rise up and fight back against your oppressors. Stokely Carmichael identified it as systemized racism. And that's the truth. And it don't have to be just a black and white thing. It's really systemized classism when it comes down to it. So the middle class, you know, you've been under assault for the last 30 years. They've been closing our factories. Look, I'm a former blue collar worker myself. You know, I was taught when I was a child, you bust your ass for a company for 25, 30 years, you get you a pension, and you retire. And that's the American way. You get enough, you get enough to get you a house, get your kids to college, get you a car. How attainable is that dream for you? And what do you have to do to get that? Where I used to work, there were people there who had been there for 25 years. And um, the economy went bad, but they all got fired. Of course. I'm fired. one of them. I'm one of them. You know? They didn't get laid off. They got fired. Yeah. They will find some bullshit reason and fire them. Some people were brought into the office and told straight out, you can go ahead and take your retirement, leave now, it'll all be good, or we can... We'll find a reason to fire you. I mean, they're just told. And that's the attack on the union structure of this company that has taken place over the last, actually, 40 years or so. I mean, and, and the complete stripping of the New Deal that's been taking place over the last 60 years. I mean, that's how we got out of our last depression, is to spend our way out. Austerity is some bullshit, but y'all know this. Because austerity doesn't work. It freezes the money at the top and doesn't bring it down to the people who will actually spend it. What's up, Brother Dave? That's what's happening. And y'all know this, man. Yeah. I mean, y'all know this. Y'all listen to all the Occupy shit. Wealth anyway. inequality what? fucks over the whole society. Huh? Wealth inequality fucks over the whole society. Yeah. And like that, like that's what I'm saying. There is no economic crisis. There was a human rights crisis. There's the human right to housing is under attack. The human right to medical care is How about attack. the human right to take a piss? Yeah, exactly. The human right to take a piss that, is under attack. That bothers hey, me a no lot. There's no bathrooms within like six blocks of this motherfucker right here. That, that bothers None. me a lot, you know? Yeah. It should. I bet it does, especially you're a woman too. That sucks. Yeah. Well, I might. We're a little I, bit more blessed. I'll take my picture. I'm right, and I, and, I, and I look okay. You know, I look clean and I look sane, and people will let me use their bathroom. Yeah, you're blessed on that. Yeah. You know, and that's that's coming from an atheist. You're blessed on that. I think Martha's Kitchen will let me go right now without buying anything. Yeah. I think they would. Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. know if that applies to everybody, though. No, it doesn't apply to everybody. Yeah. And that, 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 that is a privilege of being white. I enjoy it every day. Yeah. You know? But you have to realize that that's a privilege. Right? And how fucked up is that? that well, is I know. Like, I can walk into any bar and go to the bathroom. I don't have to buy anything. I mean, it's... It, 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 it's but it's after 2 a.m., then what do I do? Huh? What do I do after 2 a.m.? You don't do shit. I have to do it. I mean, they close the bathrooms here at 9 at night. What bathrooms? Well, we have a public bathroom about five blocks, six blocks down on uh -huh. San Pedro and Fifth. The machine bathroom? Yeah, that's closed. That's not 24 hours. They close that at 9 o'clock. Wow. Yeah. So after that, there are no bathrooms. Can't they automate it so that the door opens and so you can't sleep in there? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Wow. How you doing, brothers? Those machine bathrooms are scary. Well, shit, at least they're bathrooms. I know. Well, and and that, that, that was one of the main things in the county health report, that there was feces and, and, and urine. 
Yeah, because the city took out the bathroom. They took out the trash can. The, the police tried to seize one of our trash cans. I'm fr quite sure Patty got it on tape. They literally was. What is this? It's a trash can, officer. <laughs> well, whose is it? It's the people's. It's a fucking trash can. What are you talking about? <laughs> they literally tried to seize a trash can. This is how far they've gone. This is how fucked so up did, did these people did are So did you guys mentally. pick it up and, and carry it in the picket line? Yes. It that, was ridiculous. It's crazy. And absolutely ridiculous. And that's, that, that's what it is. I mean, look, when it comes down to it, no matter what you think, even if you buy the line, which is complete bullshit, that everybody out here is a junkie and all that fucking line, all right? You still think that they deserve that? Where are they going to go? I mean, where else is there to go? I, I mean, Los Angeles is the homeless capital of the world, and it's also voted, you know, not only, uh, it's also voted, I, I, I wouldn't say voted, that's not the right thing, but acknowledged by the United Nations as one of the cruelest cities to the homeless in the world. Sao Paulo, Brazil is the homeless capital of the world. We're second to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sao Paulo, Brazil is nicer to its homeless than we are. I thought they are. And the richest country in the world. Now, are there laws against giving people food here? Yes, there are. There's literally laws. There, there has been big court fights against feeding the homeless. Catholic Charities don't play. I love Catholic Charities. If you're watching, we love you. You are the coolest, most hardcore people we've ever met. Yeah, I was but, in the court case for Martha. Yeah. I sat in on Martha's court case. That was the most badass court case I've ever seen because they had the best. Yeah. The best public defender. They had the best prosecutor. And they were just going at it. Yeah. First yeah. Amendment all the way. That was that was a badass court case. It, yeah. it dropped in like two days. Yeah, absolutely. That's because it's ridiculous. But they don't care if it drops. That's the point. They don't care if it drops. Because if you have no money. And Martha, poor, like this, this, this very sweet lady, Martha, and was there. She's an amazing lady. And she, she was this very, she just kept this little smile on her face. Like a very serene smile on her face. Very subtle smile. Uh -huh. She was very clean. She was very quiet. She had her crucifix on. She was dressed very plainly, and uh, she just she just looked so sweet. And like, really, this sweet Catholic lady, who she's like, well, and they said, why is she there at the Occupy camp? She was there to feed the people. Exactly. Really, you're gonna put her in jail? Exactly. She's there to feed the people. Yeah. Really. And the Occupy camp in general is a whole thing. I mean, y'all are more familiar with that. It's the same thing here. The same laws that they use to move the Occupy camp. I say all the time, it's the same enemy. It's the same enemy. It's the CCA lobby to get us off of there. But it's not just the CCA. The CCA is, is, is just a dog. The CCA is just a dog of the power elite. And that's what they want to do. They want to turn L.A. It's, it's, city it's corporate control of government and everything else. It's just Occupy Wall Street in, in, in Los Angeles local level. That's what CCA is. Well, that's what I want to ask anybody watching, man. Like, what do you think is the city of the future? What would you rather have? A huge downtown that's a tourist trap? What is the city of the future? With a whole bunch of homeless people, even more. I mean, we got 85,000, and that's just who's been counted. You know, you know, on average, that might be 60% of the homeless population in L.A. Because most homeless people are not going to identify as homeless or not going to be counted by the census. I think it might be cheaper to, to house people. I, I mean, it would, take it would care not of only them. be cheaper, it would be more humane. That would be the city of the future. A city that honors human rights and makes that its push to honor and protect its citizens. That's the city of the future. What we're seeing is, 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 is eventually going to strip us all of our homes. It's going to strip us all of our rights. It's already stripped us of our wages. I'm sure most of you out there busting your ass <laughs> now, I've for heard, 16 um, bucks an hour. I heard that there's more empty houses, foreclosed houses, than there are, there are homeless people. There's, I mean, I, I, all right, you got to figure there's like, what, 10.6 10 million homeless people in the U.S. I, I'm... I'm just, I, I'm just pulling that number so out. So there's of my, more empty houses than that. On, on an average, um, so it's about 10.6 million. There's about 18 million empty houses. Damn. You know that are owned by the bank, that are help, being held by investors till the neighborhood rolls up. Let's and go that, take that's some. Let's go way. take some houses. I mean, let's go. Let's go take some houses. Yeah. Well, that's what we were. Gonna, that's what we're going to discuss uh, on the shadow media 
show whenever the hell we get into. We were going to broadcast it live here, but we're discussing, and that's what we do in Chicago, New York. I, you could take back the land. The reason that L.A. is one of the coldest cities to the homeless is they have all kinds of laws to prevent you from actually homesteading. You know, and so houses will sit abandoned for years, years. Well, people sit on the streets. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for the neighborhood. You know, I mean, you don't have your treatment centers. You don't have your mental health facilities. You don't have what you need. So I want that. That's that's my question. What do you think is the city of the future, people? Do you think the city of the future is a whole bunch of businesses downtown, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things making money for people who are not you? You know, like they want to put a Walmart in Chinatown. It's going to create. 37 low-paying jobs Hell no. and kill the entire economy of Chinatown, the entire mom and pop economy that keeps that shit going. It's gonna not it's gonna create 37 low-paying jobs and eliminate over a hundred jobs that support families. At least people have to go get food stamps who work out exactly. who work at Walmart. How the hell do you have a job and your job says you to go get food stamps? How the fuck does that even happen? Is that America? Now is I mean, oh yeah, it is America. But is that what you want, America? Look, check.